The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. <clears throat> okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, it looks like the position at Apple is going to be under a great deal of trouble today because of Mr. Buffett coming out, doing his one-hour talk with uh, Miss Becky Quick, saying that he has 10% of his wealth in the Apple. So we're going to see if that's going to be. Keep your stop working, folks, at 299 and uh, point two five. And that's what we'll be watching. Hold on one second. We'll see what we've got here. I don't have any charts yet, Al, but bear with me one second here. I didn't get home till two in the morning, and I wanted to be sure uh, that I had this computer working before I had everything running. So let me bear with you here, get a couple of things going. There was one thing that happened overnight that uh, I think was relatively important. Actually, it happened on the 31st. Let's get this up here to take a look at it. And this is one that we've been following extremely closely, and that is the British pound. You'll notice from the high that we made back at that uh, 135.20, which was the 78% uh, level on the daily, uh, excuse me, on the weekly, and you'll notice here that we made the exact 61% retracement here on, <clears throat> oh dear, hold on a second here, I'm being attacked here by questions. It's up 1%. Yep, I see Apple is up 1% at uh, 2, 296. It got down to 285, and then Mr. Buffett came on with um, um, Becky Quick and said that he had never seen a stock like this and that uh, he had 10% of his net worth, which was, 100, or which was $10 billion in the stock. He owes 64 million shares of uh, Apple. So um, that, here I am beating uh, the drum against the biggest Indian in the in the tribe. So I keep uh, I, I am I, I'm probably going to lose on this, but I'm going to do that trade time after time. I will mention this, folks. Uh, I followed Mr. Buffett's career for quite a while, and I've, I've noticed several times that uh, he's come out. In fact, in 1997, he came out saying that the uh, he had 10 percent of the above ground silver in the whole world. And uh, silver jumped a buck and a half that day and up to around, I think it was around $14. I've got the chart, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to uh, bring it up today. But if we, if you uh, realize that uh, when the Berkshire Hathaway report came out uh, a month or so later, there was no silver. He had sold all of his silver. So uh, I'm sure that he would not do anything like that, but you have to do these uh, things, and we'll see see what's going on, and we will go from uh, that level. Anyway, that's what we're watching. We'll keep it. Watch this British pound. It did exactly what we were hoping it would do. You notice that it stopped right at the 382. Boy, I'm being bombarded. But that's what happens when you fly and you get stuck in uh, airports until 2 in the morning and you don't get home till late. Uh, I am just getting bombarded with messages. Those of you that are Skyping me, please uh, don't Skype with me until after the show because uh, I am running behind and I'm just trying to put this thing together. Um, okay, let's move on here. But I'll just refer to the Apple one more time. Keep your stop working at 299 and a quarter. If you remember when we were on the show, I said you had a chance to put your stop at break even when it was 285. Those of you that, you know, and this is why I don't do the trade of the year. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's move on here and uh, see where we are. Hold on a second here. I've got that. I've got a, a quick one here to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hold on just a second here. Okay. Ah, uh, folks. Ah. Uh, uh, Okay, let's move on here. Uh, hold on one second. I got to do something here, folks. Sorry, folks. I have to do something here. I have a. Uh, I have to ask, answer a question for Mr. Monley. That it please. 
Hold on a second. A uh, second. Uh, okay. All right, let's move on here. Um, all right, let's get on to the program. I'm sorry, sorry I'm running late, folks. I was didn't think I was even going to be able to make it, and I probably shouldn't have, but that's the way it was. Okay, we, we covered the British pound. Here's one that I, I think is very important. We got this from our good friend, Rich Anderson. It comes from the desk of Ed Yardini, who is one of the better analysts and technical guys on Wall Street. He's, he's putting into uh, perspective the... Uh, S&P valuation, the P.E. ratio, and you can see here we're at all-time highs, folks. We're higher than we're now than we were in 1929, and you'll notice up here that we're watching these. Uh, there's a three-drive pattern there at the top uh, from uh, 09 to 2015, and then uh, where we are right now. Uh, what, what he said in this evaluation was that, uh, that one of the reasons why this thing has jumped up so much in the last uh, year and a half is the fact that these uh, executives buy back their shares, much like they do with Apple and other places, and that makes the things go higher. I mean, stop and think. Apple, had, Apple with 300, how, how much money they have to make? I don't know. And yet they're still issuing bonds? Wow, that tells you that it's low interest rates really mean something, I guess. So we'll be able to see. Okay, uh, that's what we're watching here. Okay, let's move on here. Uh... Oh, this was back in 1989. I remember that that was from the uh, that was from the silver debacle in 1980, when they did they watched he has 280 billion in cash, shut the front door and raise the rent. Who would have ever thunk it? Okay, let's move on here. Uh, the, the gold, folks. We've made a new high in gold this morning. We took out the old highs there at uh, two at 15 uh, 29 15. 29.80, we get up to 15.31. I haven't checked it lately because I don't know where the prices are, but uh, that's the main thing. The big thing is that the euro did stop at that level, that right near that level we were looking at, and we'll get this up here so you can take a look at it. It's now trading below the 61% uh, retracement. The, uh, the British pound went exactly to the number. Uh, that that was really an amazing one because that that stopped exactly at the at the major number. Okay, now let's move on. Any questions? Now today would really be a good day to help the old cowboy out. Walter and I are under a little bit of pressure because we we didn't get to sleep very much. And then when I finally did get here, I was planning to get up at four o'clock, but uh, I didn't get to bed till two thirty. And then when by the time the old bell rang, it was quarter till the hour, and I didn't have anything ready uh, to set up. And believe, I have. Haven't even answered emails for 26 hours, so that's basically, it. folks. Let, let's just let's just review here. I've got all these charts, so let's let's just do that. Let's just get up here and take a quick look here at Apple one more time, and see where we are because we are trading above that old number that we were looking at, and I don't know if it's going to work or not, and you know we'll see. But that uh, that's what we're looking at. That's a big number up there at 1.618. That number is 291 and a half. Uh, and it got to 294, and today we're trading at 296 after we backed off. Bonds. Uh, uh. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Z. Hey, we'll be back, and we'll talk about bonds for Marshall in just a second. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the Treasury bonds, and I, I would like to point out something that uh, we're watching, and that is that you see these real quiet days into the holidays we've had in bonds. We didn't have that quietness in the stock market at all. So the bonds are not getting a lot of uh, play here, but the, the they look relatively bearish. Folks, they've been trying to feed us this negative interest rate rate for a long time, and I just don't think that's, that's just not common sense, and I think interest rates are going to go higher. Now, we got a, a question from someone in the den here that energy stocks are due for a run to the upside. Uh, I don't really think so, and the reason why is, let's just take a quick look here uh, at the crude oil contract, and I think that will give you an idea that we should be up into some really stiff resistance in this area. Let's get this up so you'll see that 62 level was a uh, very, uh, very important. What you don't see here is, is that it's above the 78 percent level, but that other green line up there that you don't see is from a higher level. That comes in at 162. That's a, a 61 percent retracement off of a high from, on the weekly basis. So that's why that 62, I think, is, is such a you know, important point. But we haven't gone anywhere. We're trading, what, 61.30 today, so they could certainly do that. Folks, uh, as we come into this part of the year, if you remember, we had Bill Meridian on on uh, the last uh, Thursday, I believe, and uh, he, he pointed out the reasoning why he thought there was going to be a a turn in the stock market to the downside in January. His window stretched from January uh, 2nd to January 10th, if you'll remember the cycles that he was pointing out there. So that is not the thing is, uh, you know, the most, hey, wait, whoa, it says the most important tool is not your computer, it's your methodology, your brains. Uh, I agree with Dave, what David is saying. That's from Joe DiNapoli. I, uh, Joe happens to be a very dear friend of mine. I, I introduced him to Fibonacci numbers back in 1973 when we traded together in the old McCulloch Oil Building in uh, West L.A. But, uh, you know, the most important cycle of all the cycles that we deal with, folks, is the nine-inch cycle. That's the cycle from your left ear to your right ear. If you get that cycle, all right. The rest of it will fall into place without too much trouble. So remember to do that. And also, folks, I, I, you know, the people ask me, 
what what is it, the the dumbest thing you can do uh, in this business? And and frankly, I've got a bunch of rules behind me here on my uh, in this uh, painting that I have. The number one is never add to a losing position, folks. I've been trading for 59 years, and the number of times that I've added to a loser and it worked, I could count on one hand. And I'm not I can't even remember when I've ever had one that would uh, work. Now, if you're uh, I know. Well, see, the, the 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 man who loses the the man who loses best is the winner. That's the main thing that you want to keep uh, working at, right here. Okay, now let's move on here to uh, something else uh, regarding um, the we tr we covered the treasury bonds. We tr we tr did the crude oil. There's one other one that's interesting here uh, in the. Uh, in the oil complex, and that is the uh, if we get, take a look at the heating oil, because we've had a 135 pattern in that uh, thing, and you'll be able to see that 135 pattern. So this is why that 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 62 level. If we ever close above 62 in that spot crude oil, then that tells us that this thing is breaking out, and we could go back and and test that old 61 percent level at 60 uh, at 65. Remember, remember on that crude oil chart, if you look how many times it hit the uh, fifty dollar, fifty some dollar level when it was making the sixty one percent retracement hit it three times, telling it there was major major support there. Well, that that resistance also works on the upside because if you see that happening, then you're going to be able to do that. That's correct. And the other thing, well, uh, here's a nice quote here from uh, Benjamin Graham, who was one of the teachers of Mr. Buffett. He says, the essence of portfolio management is the management of risk, not returns. So I would, uh, we'll see what happens uh, with that. But there's no question about Apple being the greatest stock in the, in the world ever. There's no sales on it in Wall Street. There's not one analyst that even comes close. They just keep raising their targets, which is what's been happening. I'm the only, I'm the only uh, clock in the wheel here and I'm only hey I'm only risking a, I'm only risking less than three percent of the or, or the value of that stock so I I, I don't know if it's going to work or not all I know is at 299.25 I'm going to say oops lost this one and this would be a uh, this would be my my last uh, trade of the year for sure <laughs> all right let's move on and we'll see uh, what we have going here this morning let's let me let me do one second here before I move on and uh, uh, talk about I want to talk about the gold here because if you'll notice uh, we were looking at this gold here uh, 15 15 what is wrong with this oh this was from the yeah hold on we did break out now let's get it because I wanted to show you this line this is where I wanted to bring it to your attention here if you'll notice here the uh, you'll see the 61 percent retracement of that swing from the high uh, that comes in at uh, 1532 and I think we came pretty close to that today so we'll see that's it's a very narrow range though but we've had a big move so if we get above this well we've already we hey folks after we cleared 1520 we went up to 1529 what did we do we backed off nine dollars I've been mentioning to you each day here that all the corrections in gold over the last several weeks have only been five to ten, five to nine dollars that's all and that's what happened on Friday. We had a $9 correction. So we'll see. Uh, the high is uh, 15.30, 60. Uh, we, we went higher than that today, didn't we, Marshall? I thought my limit minder hit 15.31 in the uh, February gold. Am I wrong on that? Let me, uh, well, I can't move to the data without getting off the, off the beaten path here, and I certainly don't want to do that. Let's move on to one other one that I think is uh, interesting long term. Let's get it up here so we can take a quick look at it. And that is the NASDAQ. And uh, we have made a new high in the NASDAQ. Let's see where we are here to that point here. I can't find the chart. Oh, there it is. This is the one I wanted to show you here. This is the, uh, I want to show you the Australian dollar because they're having all kinds of problems in Australia, as you as you folks well know. Let's get this chart up so we can take a quick look at it, I believe, and then we will try to talk about the grains here when we come back from the great the break. Let me uh, let me get this. Uh, there's the Australian dollar. Let's get up here. You'll be able to see here. Here, Australia is burning down. Yeah, there it is. The high has been uh, 1531 uh, 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 80. That is. Uh, that's it. Okay, that's it. That's all right, Marshall. We're all entitled to one 
one correction in a year, and today is the first trading day of the year, so your, uh, your tickets have been used, my friend. May God bless you and Lynn for a happy new year. It's been a joy of meeting you guys. All right, let's take a look here. This is the Australian dollar in the midst of Australia burning down. I mean, parts of it are really in big trouble. The parts of Australia that is burning down is equal to about half the size of England, folks. So you can see the problems. They have temperatures there at 100 degrees with the, you know, the uh, uh, wind blowing strong. We have quite a few friends over there that have been talking to us about it. And many of these people are not insured. So when they get wiped out of their, you know, very expensive real estate, that's it. They got to start all over. And uh, so let's send some white light on some prayers on this. But there's problems all over the world. And my goodness, I tell you, as I, as I get older, I, I just can't see so many things going wrong in the world. But that's the way it is. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm going to go down memory lane here because we're at a real critical level in these markets, I think. That's my opinion, of course, and it's like, uh, you know, everybody has an armpit and it usually smells. So be, be careful about what I say. However, I want you to look at what we have going here. This was 2009, okay? You'll see that we have a three, 
pre-drive to a bottom pattern. We have a 1.618 expansion there. As you can see that this was March the 9th. Uh, this was a newsletter. I would been, I'd been uh, working with TFNN for about 18 months at that point. And I was doing the trades of the year. This was my trade of the year. I said in the letter that time that we were going to see the largest rally in the stock market uh, since, uh, um, I believe, since 1938, which was uh, the biggest rally at that time, a percentage rally. Well, this went, went a little more than I thought. We, we were trading at 6,600, if you'll remember, in the Dow Jones uh, at that time, and we went to 28,000. 700 and rising. So all I'm saying is this is a pattern like anything else. The Bradley model uh, was saying that the bottom should be in. What are we looking at right now? We've already talked about that. Tim Bose talked about it. Norm Winsky's talked about it. Bill Meridian's talked about it. We're over some type of a cycle here. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But this is what uh, well, this is what we're looking at. So keep in mind that uh, even though this craziness appears to be crazy, it's all related to numbers. That's all it is. There's nothing more than that. Uh, it's either, it's, like the other man, it's either chicken poop or chicken salad. It depends on how you mix it. Okay, I want to give you this quote here from our good friend uh, David White. The successful trader must fight his two deep-seated instincts. He must reverse what you might call his natural impulses. Instead of hoping, he must fear. Instead of fearing, he must hope. He must fear his losses may develop into such much bigger loss and hope that his profit will become a much bigger profit. You just, just by Jesse Livermore, you just described the the uh, the trading pat, uh, the trading philosophy of Tom Hugard, who is a very very successful trader. So let's move on and we'll see. You know what uh, uh, that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, hold on a second. I've got to answer somebody. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's move on here to the next one. All right. I have a couple people that I work with, folks, that are very, very uh, large traders. And uh, when they put positions on, it's truly amazing to listen to their uh, how they actually uh, how they actually uh, work, you know, with their uh, ideas and how they trade and stuff. It, it's truly amazing to see their thinking processes, what they have. They really do think about, you know, the defensive part uh, of their trading. You know, that's the main thing. And we had a big break in stocks. It covered a little bit down there at that 382. We hit that perfect 382 in the stocks, folks, from the low of December 13th. That came in at 13, 14, 31, 14. We've now rallied. We're almost making new highs. The Nasdaq, I did believe, make new highs, but we'll see how how the rest of it's going to uh, how it's best is how it's best it's going to uh, unfold here. Okay, now let's get on to the natural gas because uh, natural gas is getting down near that 210 level, folks. I want to bring this up again. And if you'll remember, we had one of our listeners come on from Boston, I believe. And he talked to us about natural gas. And I thought that we were going to get down to this 1.27 level. And this is the uh, the, U the ETF, the uh, UNG. Now, that comes in at 16.30. I don't know where it's trading this morning. Actually, the actual number is 16.25. Uh, and that would be equivalent to 210 in the uh, natural gas futures. And I think that they're going to hold that level. Now, whether they do or not, uh, and here again, it's, I'm just looking at the charts. I have never seen a natural gas uh, commodity itself, but uh, that's what it looks like. So I'd watch that very, very closely. Okay. Uh, I don't understand uh, this, Larry, for the uh, – uh, I don't understand that, that message from GL. I don't know what I did wrong there. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, also, remember what Bill Meridian said. And remember. Remember, he, his work is all psycho-related, and he's wrong at times. He hasn't been wrong for us, but, you know, over a period of years, there's has been periods where he actually missed some things. But he, he was looking that uh, it would probably uh, 297. Thank you very much. We had to have a new high here. Well, we're $2 and uh, $2 and a quarter away from getting getting uh, knocked out. And if it happens, uh, that's the way it is. I certainly am not going to apologize because that is, uh, you give me that trade, you give me that trade 100 times, folks, I'm going to win on it 95. I, the, those 1.618 numbers are just flat out, just spot on. So I would be 
uh, I will not, uh, I, I, just, I call him as I see him. You know, you pays your money and you takes your choice. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's going to be good and sometimes it's not. Let's get over to the grain market, folks, because I think we've got a chance here for some of these grains to break out to the upside after we have a correction. I think we're going to get a correction in here. Here's the March soybean contract. And as you can see here, we up, up around this 952 level. I haven't been able to check it this morning. But it looks like these things are ready to, uh, you know, break out to the upside. I don't know if it has anything to do with these deals that are going on in China. It's like everything else in the news. The more I read about the news, the less I have any any feeling about it at all. Because what you're reading about in Hong Kong is not what's actually happening over there, folks. These are not protesters. These folks are terrorists. When you start throwing models Molotov cocktails down from the freeway onto cars, it's uh, pretty good. So that's, you see, the, 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 it is breaking out to the upside. I thought that it would be doing that from the action that we had uh, on uh, Friday because it backed off about $0.08 cents and then came back really, really strong. So that means we're, we're going to be popping up to that 78% uh, level without too much trouble, I would believe. So that's it. Corn's holding up, it, holding itself too, which is is really doing pretty good too. So let's uh, we'll be watching those as we go through here at looking some of that. We've got a caller from uh, Kansas. Robert, are you there? I am. Good morning, and thank you for taking my call. Thank you very much. You were very lucky to get through. Al tells me there were about 200 people ahead of you. So consider yourself in the lottery category. What can I do for you, my friend? <laughs> I wanted to uh, call in and see if you could talk to me about gold. And I know you covered it this morning, but I had a different uh, question about gold. Can you talk about what open interest means in general, and I guess in particular for gold, and then talk about how that compares to commitment of traders and which one you feel more comfortable with, or do you use both or just one? Um, so, so I, that's my the, question. The, 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 the open interest is the simplest one because that's reported by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange every day. Uh, the, the, that's a it's an auction exchange. So for every for every bid there has to be an offer. So for every buyer there has to be a seller. So for the open interest to increase by one, you have to have a new buyer and a new seller coming into the market. Now if open interest goes up and prices go down, that means shorts are covering. That means the, the, the people are, that are short are covering their positions, and that makes the market, you know, continuing to go higher. Uh, yesterday, for instance, in the S&P, on that, the, the Friday before the end of the year, uh, open interest actually dropped by 5,000 contracts. Well, it's not very much. Uh, can you stay with us, Robert? I, this is a very important yeah. thing that we need to cover. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Robert over in Kansas about open interest. Uh, and so that basically... Uh, I it's very easy to look at, Robert. All you have to do is every day, let's say you're following gold, all you have to do is to go to www.cme.com, click on data, then click on metals, then scroll down to where it says gold futures. And then if you want to click on that, it'll show you which each of the contracts are doing, but it'll give you the, the total open interest and that change on the day, and that's what you're doing. Now, with the other one that you're talking about, about the commitment of traders and that I one, that one. Uh, sorry, one, one second. I'm sorry to interrupt. So on the open interest, you're saying if open interest goes up and it goes and the price goes down, it's 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 short covering. What's a, yes, it what's is. a positive what's a positive message on open interest? Okay, when when prices go up and open interest goes up, there are new buyers coming in. Okay, that that's very bullish. Uh, that's bullish. Regarding the other one about the commitment of traders and the other ones that uh, commercials and all that other stuff, that the problem with that reporting is it's coming in late. You know what I mean? It's and I've looked at that, but I have not had much, much luck with it. Uh, first of all, that's for really long-term positioning usually, but uh, I, I just have not had too much luck. Someone who's very good at that is. Larry Williams, and there's another guy that does it. I think it's Steve Breeze. Yes, Steve Breeze is the man who uh, really knows that. His whole his whole letter is is nothing. Uh, it, that's all about that commitment of traders, and that type of thing. But you know, I'm I'm really a simple. Uh, a simple person as far as the trading goes, Robert, because I look at that chart and that bar chart, it tells me, you know, whether buyers or sellers are coming together, and I try to keep it as simple as possible. And when I have to start thinking of too many variables, it makes it more difficult for me. And so I try to keep it as simple. And look, a perfect example, Robert, no one in the right mind would sell Apple short. You know, <laughs> I right. mean, I started it started out pretty good. It's not it's not ending very well right now. But um, I, I still have that's how I operate. I operate on those numbers. They've they've they served me well over the years, and I'll continue to do that. But that's that's my feeling on open interest. I'm I'm very very strongly uh, important about that because it comes right out of uh, John Murphy's book and John Hill's book, and it, it's all related to uh, the number of buyers or sellers. When you start seeing big drop, we saw this in bonds, Robert. I don't know if you listened every day, but, you know, back in September, we were having big drops in open interest in bonds. People were leaving that market like there was uh, a fire like they have in Australia. And now, you know, we're 15 handles lower, and nobody says anything about it, you know. So uh, that's why you have to look at it, because it, it's pretty important. Can you go to the CME uh, dot com and get the open interest for both gold and bonds? Yes, you can. All you have to do is just where it goes to where it says interest rates. You just click on interest rates. It'll give you all of them. And there's hundreds of them in there. But just go down to your 30-year treasury bond or go to your 10-year your notes, your two-year notes, your five-year notes. All of them will be listed there. And if you click on that, uh, if you click on that toggle, 
it'll take you and show you exactly which each contract is doing, which ones are uh, getting more interest or, or not getting most. And also the same thing with options, too. It'll go and give you the option open interest. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And a happy new year to you, my friend. And the same to you. Okay, let's move on here and talk a little bit more uh, about one of the things that we wanted to talk about, and that is this gold market. Uh, we just went, made a new high up here just a minute, just a minute ago at uh, 1533. So we'll keep a close eye on that one. Uh, we got the crude oil trading at uh, 6117. I think we're we're starting to uh, move down. Uh, by the way, folks, uh, if you if you trade. Uh, uh, you know, off these Fibonacci numbers, you know, we hit the exact 61% retracement on the British pound. Uh, uh, just uh, when was that? When did we hit that? We hit that uh, on the uh, 31st. And here we are. We're down now here on the second here. We are trading. Uh, uh, we're trading right at the 382 retracement now of the uh, of the whole move. So this is a really key. Uh, really, let's just do this together since we can have some fun with some live stuff. But uh, this is what I do during the day as I watch these key levels. If you'll notice here, let's just get it up here because we're within about 10 pips of actually seeing it. And we'll pull up and we'll be able to make it. Okay, the Russell, I, well, hold on just a second, boys and girls. This is not going to work. I've got to move this over just a little bit here. And then we'll get next. We got some. Uh, we're gonna have some really. We're gonna have some new guests next week, folks. I'm hoping to have uh, uh, <laughs> Richard Mogi from the Foundation from the Study of Cycles. He's uh, become a retired fisherman now down in Tennessee, but he wants to share some of his ideas uh, about cycles and also some of the work that they did with the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. That'll be a really good one uh, to look at. So we want to pay. Uh, very, very close attention to that one uh, also. Okay, let's move on to uh, one other one here that we want to talk about. Uh, let's see, the NASDAQ, oh yeah, the NASDAQ shattered the old high by a lot. It, well, not a lot. We went above the high, 15, so 88.43, and we got to 88.52. Uh, we went 10 points higher. We had, didn't take it out in the S&P as of yet, but it's still early in the day. Let me double check here to see how, how bad it's going going to be here. Uh, well, it's not too bad. We uh, we got up to 96.69. We're at 95.86 uh, now in the Apple. So you're still alive. But as the man said, as he's going out the window, well, everything's okay so far. You don't get hurt till you hit the bottom, folks. So keep your stop working in Apple. And uh, believe me, this is, this is going to be history because this is the last one you're going to get as a trade of the year. I do a lot of... A lot of trades, but not a trade of the year. And I, uh, oh, I don't know. You just, you just have to, you, the people just ask you so many, and a lot of the questions are really great, folks, but I just can't answer them because all I, you know, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I, I really do. I, you know, when they, when they start talking about things like uh, commitment of traders and things, I've looked at that stuff. I don't understand it and I can't use it. I do watch open interest, of course, but I keep it as simple as possible. Open interests are a great tool. My gosh, if you look at what uh, Basil Chapman and uh, uh, David works with them and also uh, Steve Rhodes, they're experts at that. That's not my expertise. My expertise are ratios, patterns, and that's it. You know, I keep it as uh, possible, simple as possible. And I owe all that to uh, John Hill and uh, uh, William McKinley uh, Garrett. And that's a uh, uh, Garrett. <laughs> Gar and also William Garrett was great. And also, and of course, of course, Mr. Bryce Gilmore out of Australia. He's not being damaged by the fires, folks. So he's uh, he's okay. All right, let's move on to the bonds a little, little bit here. We're having a little bit of a rally here this morning in the bonds. And we'll see how it's going to end up here. Well, at least we're getting to the end of the show. Folks, I will have a much better show for you tomorrow. I have, I'll be fully prepared uh, for the end of the week as uh, always. And uh, we'll be back to normal. But uh, I actually was not scheduled to come on today, but I thought I was going to make it home. But boy, we really had a rocky flight. Those of you that have flown into Tucson, when, when this wind comes in, the desert wind at night, shut the front door and raise the rent. It is really, really rocky. So let's move on here and uh, see what we've got. I'm going to take a little break here. We'll come back and we'll uh, try to review where we stand this week because. Uh, 
we're coming into a, this is going to be a really great year for volatility folks so volatility is going to rock and roll it's really going to be quite spectacular so let's uh, keep an eye on that 877-927-6648 I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We're back, folks, and what we wanted to do is to uh, chat here uh, a little bit about the action today that we're seeing in the stocks. We've made a new, uh, new high in the NASDAQ. We have not made it in the Russell nor the S&P as of yet, but it's still early in the day, so we'll keep a close eye on it. Remember, we're near the end of the week now, and these are the most uh, positive days for money coming in from the uh, people that uh, invest in their 401ks. It's the, the last day of the month and the first two trading days of the new month, which that brings us in to, to uh, today and tomorrow. So we'll we'll watch that uh, very, very closely to uh, take a look at it. Okay. Now, regarding the bonds, folks, we've, we've been under a great deal of pressure in the bonds since September. We should get a good rally in here. Whether we're going to or not, I don't know. The one thing that you want to watch in the bonds is the fact if you see something very unusual happen, like someday where they might go either limit down or limit up, if they if you see something 
like that, that means something really big has happened. They can't hide from you. They can lie to you. They can cheat you. They can do whatever they want, but they can't hide from you. So if there's more buying, the prices are going to go up. If there's more selling, the prices are going to go down. Same thing in the stock market. You know, we've got record uh, open interest up. Well, it's not. We've had we've had a huge drop in open interest in the S and P folks in the last two weeks. I've reported this. You know, it used to be 3.2 million open interest. Now we're trading at 2.7. We lost 600,000 people in the December. They didn't roll over their stuff to March, whoever those people were. And so, we'll, you know, that all I'm just reporting here, that's all I'm trying to do anyway. So we'll have some uh, guests uh, next week for sure. We're going to have Stan Harley in. We'll try to have Richard Mogi on, and we'll have some others. Hopefully it will be uh, real exciting to talk about and see what's going on. Haven't seen a football game or a uh, political uh, news of any kind for the last uh, two weeks, which is great. And I want to thank you folks for joining us for all of last year and hope we'll have a wonderful, you know, 2020. It's hard to believe I'm saying that. You know, folks, I've outlived my mother by uh, 40 years and my father by 25. 